Well, hey everybody. It's um, Saturday, and temperature got down to one degree last night. A little chilly. Um, it's warmed up now to about 14 outside. And this uh, this little story started 38 years ago, when I was about 17 years old. Um, I was uh, I was into a lot of the uh, the mountain man stuff um, and did a lot of that sort of thing with my uncle we would uh, make powder horns priming horns little patch knives just all kinds of things that um, we would take to these events called rendezvous uh, mountain man type enthusiasts buckskinners as they called them um, would dress in period garb and uh, all get together and basically uh, it was a really good excuse to party uh, from what I could remember and what I gathered as a as a kid and it was at one of those rendezvous um, that was held in Land Between the Lakes which is a uh, a huge tract of land that was about 30 miles west of where I grew up in Clarksville Tennessee um, there was a fellow there uh, who apparently was a, a pretty good friend of my uncle's his name was uh, Warren Boughton and um, he was better known as Hawk Button because he was, uh, it was a nickname given to him because he was very good at throwing a tomahawk and a knife and he's also a, uh, a good gun maker. And um, at one of those rendezvous, uh, I came upon him and my uncle talking. And my uncle had made this tracing uh, off a cardboard pattern of a knife that Mr. Button had designed. And this uh, this is not the exact same piece of paper this is a copy of that piece of paper that I got from my uncle shortly before my uncle's death um, probably 10 years ago 12 years ago and I asked him if he had ever made the knife or if he ever knew that uh, Mr. Boughton had ever made it he said well he said Hawk was thinking about making this knife I don't know if he ever did and I always wanted to make it and I never did and I got this tracing from him with um, with the intent of making it since at that time I had already started getting into knife making and I never made it. Well, 38 years later I've decided that I'm gonna make this knife. And what he had originally designed it to be, the original uh, tracing, if you notice this comes down to a shoulder and then comes back to a square tang. And I believe that uh, that Hawk Button had originally intended for this to be a hidden tang knife and what I decided to do, uh, I'm going to make two versions of this knife. I'm going to make a hidden tang, and I'm going to make a full tang version. And I intend to get the handle. Um, it's a big old chunk of elk antler. And somewhere in this big chunk of antler is a, a good, uh, good set of scales uh, for the full tang version. And then maybe this main beam for the hidden tang version. I'm going to make the full tang version first. And one of the things that uh, I'm waiting for, uh, I have let myself run out of good, sharp, 80-grit uh, sanding belts. And I've learned a long time ago, I'm just not going to try to do this with dull belts, because all they do is build up heat. Um, you're forever having to dunk them to, to cool them off. And it, it, it's kind of frustrating. So they've got a bunch of them on order. Uh, and where I get them from, boy, they don't linger too long in getting them to you. So probably by Wednesday of this coming week I should have my new belts and I'm gonna get started on both knives and I'll bring you guys along for the project now on the um, on the full tang version I've already made the pattern so for the full tang version I intend to make this out of this this is a 01 3 16 by inch and a quarter stock and if you notice it just it just fits on this so as I do with all knives that are 3 16 or, or wider or thicker on the stock, I'm going to do a tapered tang to kind of balance everything out. And for the guard material, I'm going to use this uh, 3 quarter by 3 quarter inch brass. And this is just a sketch I made. Um, this is going to be the width of the guard, and the guard is going to kind of taper in. Uh, the taper and the tang will start at the base of the guard and go back, and then I'm going to let this guard taper up 
and you notice it has a finger groove, but I want, uh, want the balance of the knife to be somewhere in here uh, where it would split your two fingers. And the idea of the design, I suppose, was to have a full handle back here, but then you could also get up here. And he had mentioned something about serrations up here just to catch your thumb. So to give you a little bit of fine tune uh, if you're working inside of a, an animal dressing it out or just doing any kind of fine detailed work. So I cannot take any credit at all for the design of this knife but I want to try to make it as true to this pattern as I can and I just think that it's a uh, that it's a knife that's um, that's worth making and for those of you familiar with the Foxfire series of books um, Hawk Button was mentioned in Foxfire 5 there was a write up on him uh, it's something to do with uh, gun making um, flintlock type rifles and that sort of thing and I, I used to own the entire set of Foxfire books and it was only because my mom was such a scrapbooker that I even have this pattern um, because she kept all this sort of thing in a in a photo album and this fell out one day and I said gosh that's that's that knife so all these years later um, this knife is finally going to come to be in three dimensions and as I said, we're going to make two versions. We're going to do a hidden tang version with one of the beams, um, and then we'll do a full tang using some of this elk antler for some scales. And uh, we'll take our time and do a good job and see what you guys think about it. So, yeah, uh, just waiting for the belts now, but uh, we'll be glad to bring you along, and, uh, and thanks for watching.